Howdy folks, my name is Pillow Samurai, and today I've got a totally unique, totally out of the blue video for you guys. I'm gonna call this Pillow's Picks, and it's just a little bit of a look into some games that I enjoy playing that aren't Rainbow Six or Battlefield or anything that you've seen on this channel. The first one is called Risk of Rain, and it's gotta be one of my favorite roguelikes. Um, it's set in a sci-fi environment. You're an astronaut who's been marooned. Your spaceship was blown up and crash-landed, and you have to fight through multiple levels to survive, and finally escape the planet. Now the way this works is you find teleporters on each map and they're in different spots each time you play and the maps are laid out just a little bit differently each time. They have the same general layout but then crates and the teleporter and everything is located separately. Then when you activate said teleporters you'll summon a boss and it starts a countdown. Enemies spawn during that countdown and you have to deal with the boss and the new enemies and once you kill them all you'll be able to uh, advance to the next level. Now you repeat this four or five times and it goes through different environments so you have different enemy types and whatever. There's only about seven maps in rotation however I think five per playthrough so you have a few that will be switched out as you go on. And even though they're the same maps in the rotation they feel unique they each have their own art style and music and enemies as I mentioned before and and it's just really fun to go through and, and try to do better and better. And you do better and better by getting uh, better items and using new characters. So there's a very strong emphasis on this. This is really how you progress and level up as a character. You get items by unlocking chests with money that you earn through killing enemies and whatever. And you get characters by doing tasks with other characters. For, so for example, um, as the commando, if you finish the first level in say under three minutes, you unlock somebody else. And if you say complete the first level without taking damage, then you get an achievement and you get and another character. There's a strong emphasis on tailoring to your playstyle too. My favorite character is called the Huntress because she can kite, meaning run in one direction and shoot behind her and just avoid damage through movement and some of her abilities. To help the items and achievements and characters flourish, they have a very big stats page so you can check out to see how long you've played as each and you know how many kills you've gotten and the longest you've survived and all that stuff. And on the other side you have item and monster logs so you can see what you've collected and what each thing does. Now, the absolute best part about Risk of Rain is the presentation. The art and music is really well done. Um, everything sounds unique and tailored to each level, so it creates an ambience like no other. For example, one of the levels is called Fungal Heaven, and the music portrays like this damp, dark place that all these mushrooms and, and enemies would be living. And I think it's absolutely amazing. And I briefly touched on earlier that there's a wide variety of enemies. So you have your typical grunts, which are called Lemurians, and they just come up and attack you with melee. Then you have things like wisps, which can attack you, say, up to about 10 feet with a ranged attack. And then you have clay men, which basically, they're kind of like characters. They can run around, they have little missiles they can shoot at you, and they're just a pain in the butt to deal with. So it's never like it never feels like you're battling the same things over and over. And while the same enemies will spawn on each level, there's usually, uh, they spawn in less proportion to some of the newer enemies. Now moving on from Risk of Rain, which is a great roguelike, to The Mean Greens. Uh, the Mean Greens is a third person multiplayer only shooter, which I know may turn some people off, but it is really the environment that gets it, and it is centered around the escapades of plastic army men. So I've heard it described as like a spiritual successor to the Sarge's army men back on, I think it was the GameCube or some of the older uh, consoles. Again, I guess maybe there's a theme, but the the amazing parts about this game are the level design and the music, so the presentation is amazing. The level design itself lends itself very well to the type of game it is. There's a lot of cover, everything looks unique, so like, you know, plastic cups look like they're made out of plastic, you, you play on countertops, the wooden countertops look like they're made of wood, there's a metal sink, everything works really well together. These skyboxes are beautiful, as I mentioned, there's one where you play in a kitchen, and it just looks like you're in a kitchen, there's a window, and you can see out into a little garden, and you can see a table and some lamps, so it really creates this ambience and um, environment environment like you're actually playing as a tiny soldier. The artistic choices too are just overall very well done and it certainly fits the whole action figure game. As I mentioned the music is amazing and what they did is for each map level there is a 
a certain track and a certain game mode. So the music track fits the levels so well. I can't even explain it. It's beyond words. The game modes are tailored to the level, so everything is very, very well balanced. They took a map and specifically tailored what they thought would work to it, and that works out very well. Uh, in addition, gunplay is solid. There's a fairly high time to kill, so it takes a lot of bullets to down someone. Um, but each weapon feels unique, and you get five weapons. You have your assault rifle, sniper rifle, shotgun, rocket launcher, and flamethrower, in addition to a grenade. And between those, the balance is fairly decent. The shotgun was OP, but as I went to record this, they actually changed everything, so it fires a little bit more slowly, and it has a wider spread, so it's definitely put back in its place. The rocket launcher and grenades, the explosives in general, are very powerful, but early on there was a balance issue, so they put them on a timer, and that makes it so it's a great power weapon, but it's very situational, and you have to make sure that you use it at the right time, or else you'll be caught out with no ammo. So the really the only downside to this game is that it's got a small community and uh, that really limits it in that you can find a lobby with two or three people but beyond that uh, it's very rare. They, As I mentioned there's a big update so I got into a lobby with like eight people, four on each team and it was super super fun but again as time goes on that's probably going to dwindle a little bit. Overall it's a great game and I honestly wish more people played it. The complete opposite of that, though, is Crypt of the Necrodancer. It is a single-player game, so if that's more your style. It's by far the newest of all the games I have. I bought it during the Steam Summer Sale, and it's got the most interesting combination. It is a rhythm-based dungeon crawler. So you must move to the beat. There's like an overall song with a rhythm. It changes per dungeon, so the deeper you go into the dungeon, meaning the lower levels you reach, the faster the beat is. And at first, it's pretty hard to get into because the enemies move and attack according to the beat and you must move and attack to the beat as well so you kind of have to know the weapons and the enemies and what they do and of course if you beat one level you're going to be put into a faster one so it gets a little bit more complicated there however um it's kind of like Risk of Rain in that you have items and your gear will really determine what playstyle you're going to use and how well you do. For example, you start off with a dagger which just attacks, it does one heart damage to whatever's directly in front of you. You can change that out for a rapier or a spear that does damage to the two tiles in front of you, or a broadsword which will do any two tiles next to you. So that can be in front and above or in front and below. and you can get armor and health and items and magic stuff too, so it's not just melee. It's very, very hard to master, but it's very, very easy to hop right back in and get down to it. I'd say it took me at least an hour to really get the first dungeon down, so I was at least at an okay spot, and then, and it's taken me three hours to actually finish the entire first dungeon and move on to the second one. I think they're called zones, so I've done the first zone, and now I have to do the second zone. Overall, a great game, very fun, and it's awesome because not only do you get the music that they give you, which is amazing, you can also play with your own tracks, which I haven't tried, but I imagine is great fun. That concludes this kind of weird episode of Pillow's Picks. Um, I highly recommend Risk of Rain, Mean Greens, or Crypt of the Necrodancer if you're looking for a new game. I appreciate you listening through my sprawl, and hopefully I'll see you next time.